All right. So, hello. Welcome to Calculus. Um, we're starting off with a nice, easygoing video. We're going to be answering the question, what is calculus? Um, so, some of you have seen calculus in high school. Some of you haven't seen calculus ever. Um, you're just taking these courses because you need to for your major. Um, and for whatever reason you're here, uh, before we get started, we should talk about sort of you know, what, what is it we're going to do this year? Um, so here is um, a definition I pulled from Wikipedia. Um, let's read it. It says, Calculus is the study of limits, derivatives, integrals, and infinite series. So you can see I've labeled this. This is an unhelpful definition. Um, while this is definitely true, and it sort of describes uh, the chapters that we're going to be going through uh, together. Um, it doesn't actually help you with anything because it doesn't it doesn't say anything. You do, if you don't know what a limit is, if you don't know what a derivative is, if you don't know what these words mean, telling you that that's what calculus is all all it says is calculus is this big bag of scary things that you don't know. Um, and that's, that's not what I want you to walk away from this video feeling. I don't want you to think it's scary. I want you to think, oh, oh, this is neat. We can answer some really interesting questions. So, um, what is calculus? So, calculus is the math of answering questions that, um, are hard to answer, um, because you need to look at them really, you really, really closely, and, uh, really, calculus is the study of functions, uh, but let's go ahead and answer some questions here. So, uh, suppose you have a car, and the speedometer is broken, right? But, you know, you have this GPS, and the GPS uh, is able to tell you where your position is at every, every second, right? At every second it says, you're here, you're here, you're here, and it's watching you travel along. Um, and so there, there's that function P of T. You know, you put in 2.30, it tells you where you are, and you put in 3 o'clock, it tells you where you are. If you put in any time, that P of T function tells you where you are. So, you have this broken speedometer, but you do have, right, this function, and you want to know, could you, if you had this function, sort of figure out your speed at any time? Um, and it turns out that this is a question calculus can answer. Here's a different question, similar. Uh, if instead of wanting to know the speed at any given time, right, could we figure out what our maximum speed was during this trip or what our minimum speed was during this trip? Um, you know, and again, without calculus, you can do some work. You know, you can say, well, uh, my odometer said that I drove 60 miles and it took me an hour, so I must have been going on average 60 miles an hour. But just because you went on average 60 miles an hour didn't mean that you were always going 60 miles an hour. You were probably stopped at the beginning and stopped at the end. Um, and you probably went faster somewhere in between than 60 miles an hour. You might have been going 80 for a little while on the highway. Uh, but average 60 miles an hour. So, answer. So now let's work in the opposite direction. So instead of having a, a broken speedometer, uh, we have a broken odometer. So we have no idea how far we've gone. Right? We, we're driving on this highway. We have no idea how far we've gone. But we do know our speed at any time. Right? So again, if you're not driving 60 miles an hour perfectly, right? you haven't set cruise control, your speed's changing all the time. Um, if you're not driving a constant speed, you know, you've been driving for an hour, you might not know how far you've gone. Uh, you might know that you've never gone below 30, so you've probably gone at, at least 30 miles, and maybe you never went above 80, so you can't have gone more than 80, 80 miles in an hour, but, you know, you don't know exactly how far you've gone. Is there a way, if you know your speed always, to figure out how far you've gone? And that turns out to be another question we can answer. So here's one not involving the car. Here's one involving temperatures. So suppose you had a function uh, which you know told you the temper excuse me, the temperature at any given time. 
uh, could you figure out the average temperature? Right? That's something that you want to know, right? What's the average temperature on Thursday? What's the average temperature on Friday? We like to know that. What was the average temperature on Earth for the entire year? And it turns out that this is a question that calculus can help us answer. Um, start talking about some other stuff. So uh, this is another, this is a more practical application. So, you know, you have a... Uh, factory and your factory makes lamps um, and you figure out a function that tells you the cost of making lamps like suppose that uh, every lamp costs uh, ten dollars to make um, plus you have a base monthly cost of a thousand dollars right so you have a function that's like a thousand dollars plus ten times the number of lamps that's how much it costs per month to make lamps and, um, you know, you have another function which tells you uh, how much you can get if you sell some number of lamps, right? So suppose you have 10 lamps, maybe you can sell them for $100 each, but if you have 50 lamps, maybe you can only sell them for $75 each and so on. So you have this function that tells you um, how much you can get for a lamp depending on how many you make. Right. The more you make, the less demand there will be uh, per person because there will there will be enough lamps to go around, so people won't be willing to fight over them and pay more. Um, and so, if you have these two functions, one that tells you how much it costs to make lamps, and one that tells you how much you can get from lamps, how do you figure out the right number of lamps to make to make the most amount of money? Um, and so. That's a question that we can also answer using calculus. Um, so it turns out that there's all these awesome questions that actually sound like something you might encounter in real life um, that we can answer with calculus, that calculus is incredibly useful in this way. And so let's look at um, sort of some of what I was just talking about. So calculus really relies on functions, right? Uh, everything we do this entire semester is, is done because we have functions. We have this big box of functions that we want to answer questions about. Now, um, up here on the upper right-hand corner of this slide, you see um, there's a little graph of how many apples you've eaten on any given day. You know, on Sunday you eat zero apples, on Monday you eat one, and so on. And, you know, say I had a question, on what day did you eat the most apples? Well, that's pretty easy. You just look at the graph and you say, oh, one, two, I ate three apples on Tuesday. Tuesday I ate the most. Um, and I could ask you, uh, how many apples did you eat per day on average? And you'd say, well, one plus three plus two plus one is seven. I ate seven apples in seven days, so one per day. That's the average. Um, and so you can answer all sorts of questions about you know, the number of apples you've eaten on any given day because there's so few points of data. Um, but look at the graph in the lower left. And the graph in the lower left, that's um, time versus temperature, right? And this is a little slice of it. We just have a couple of hours here, but um, it's a continuous function. The problem with a continuous function is it's not a tiny amount of data. It's an infinite number of pieces of data, right? Between 2 and 3 p.m., there's... 2.30, and between 2 and 2.30, there's 2.15, and between 2 and 2.15, there's a whole bunch of times. There's, a, there's an infinite number of times that we could check for, and so um, when you want to answer questions about um, a continuous function, you, you can't just say, well, there's only seven things for me to check. There's a lot of things for you to check, um, and so you need a better tool. Um, so we talk about functions, and now we talk about limits. Um, and so what's a limit? Well, limits um, are this way of asking the question. You know, I have a function, and I have a particular value of x. And I want to know, what does this function do when it, when it puts in values that are almost x? We don't care about the actual value, but we care about things nearby. And so if you look in the lower right-hand corner, um, you see a graph, and that graph splits apart, 
right, um, along that yellow line. Um, and so there's a particular value of x that that breaks apart at. And we ask ourselves, we're like, well, you know, what's, what is the function doing on the left-hand side of x? You know, what does it do over there? And what does it do on the right-hand side of x? Um, and, and the limit is what allows us to investigate that, that behavior. And the other thing the limit's allowing us to do is the limit allows us to ask the question, what happens if we let x continue to get bigger? Instead of picking a specific x, we say, what happens as x just rolls away towards infinity? You know, what happens to f of x when x is 10 and 30 and 1,000 and 10 million? Does that eventually level off? Um, and so limits um, are our way of investigating functions either at a point or out by infinity. Um, thing that we're going to learn is called the derivative. And the derivative uh, takes a function and you tell it a specific value of x. So in the three graphs, the specific value of x um, is the red line on the x-axis. Um, and we ask ourselves, you know, what's, what's the rate of change of the function at the point above that value of x? And so, um, like I said before, if you were driving a car and you went 60 miles in an hour, you know you've been driving uh, 60 miles per hour, right? And so on the left, uh, under number one, um, those two points could be an hour apart. And so that gives you an average, and that average is okay, but it's not great. In, in graph number two, we've moved the two points closer to each other. So now what we say is, you know, you might have went 60 miles in an hour, but maybe you only went five miles in a half an hour for the first half hour. Well, that would be just 10 miles an hour during the first half hour. And so um, as, we, as we look at a shorter period of time, we get a better idea of what was happening at the beginning. And in uh, graph 3, we've made the time as short as possible. Um, we've made it infinitely short. And what we get is we get the exact speed you're going um, if you're traveling along that graph. After we do derivatives, we do another form of breaking things up into very tiny pieces called integrals. What integration does is it allows you to take a function and answer the question, what is the area under the function? Right? And so um, integration allows us to add up an infinite number of very small numbers. Um, if you look um, under 1, what I've done is I've broken that graph into six different boxes. Um, and if you add up the areas in those six different boxes, it's a, it's a good approximation for how much area is under the graph, but it's not great. If we make more boxes um, that fit inside of there, it's going to be a better one. We're going to lose um, less data. We're going to gain more information and be able to better approximate it. And as we let the number of boxes get bigger, you know, you, instead of doing six, you do 15, and then you do 1,000, and then you do a billion boxes, what happens is the error um, for the area under the curve goes to zero, and you eventually get exactly the area under the curve. And so that's something integration does for us. The last thing, and you won't really study this until Calc 2, uh, but it's called infinite series, um, and integration and infinite series are incredibly similar. Again, in, in integration, we're finding the area under the functions, and we do it by adding up a bunch of infinitely small numbers. Um, a series, um, instead of looking at the area under a curve, a series takes um, a sequence of numbers, and it adds them. Um, and so you can see I've done, I've done two of these, and these, will think, these are things you'll see in the future, but... Um, if you add a half to a quarter to an eighth to a sixteenth and so on, if you keep adding this progression, it adds back up to one. However, if you add up a half to a third to a fourth to a fifth and you add up this progression, it doesn't add up to anything. It winds up going off to infinity. That number, get, if you keep adding up those fractions, even though they seem small, it it gets as big as you want. And so we'll wrap up the video here. And we'll ask again, 
what is calculus? And the answer is that calculus is sort of the art of studying functions by using the mathematical equivalents uh, to a microscope. And um, everything that we're going to be able to do this semester will be done because we're not afraid of infinitely large things, right, having to do an infinite number of things, nor are we afraid of the infinitesimally small. And so, um, really, calculus is the study of incredibly small things. So, relax. They're little pieces, and we'll put them together to make something really great. So, I hope you enjoyed the video, and please make sure you look at the, the questions and the homework, and you go online and do the quizzes, and I will see you in class.